Move over, Myers-Briggs. We've got some new personality types on the block. Hey, thanks for watching. So today, I want to talk about a new study that came out this week that talks about four distinct personality types. And what I think was most interesting about this study is this is based on big data. Uh, they collected information from over a million and a half online personality quizzes, you know, like which friends are you? Are you Joey or Monica or, <laughs> or whatever? And they took the information from that, compiled it all, and, and what big data is, is it's able to find clusters, it's able to find results that you may not be able to find if you're just looking individually. You know, if you had all of these questions and you had a little graph paper and you were trying to chart it out and look for patterns, you would probably not be able to see a pattern with over a million data points, right? But through the use of computers, uh, they can use algorithms and, and come to conclusions that they might not be able to see that easily otherwise. And uh, that's called big data. And they use that to determine uh, four new personality types. So what they found is there are five big personality traits. We've, we've known that for a long time. And by seeing where people fall on the scale for those different traits, they found four clusters of people that where most people fall into somewhere on those four clusters. That doesn't mean that everyone is one of these four personality types. These are generalizations. But they found that most people uh, fell within one of these four categories. But if you don't know, there are five basic uh, personality traits. And you can remember them from the mnemonic ocean. Okay, Openness, conscientiousness, uh, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Openness, appreciation for art, emotion, adventure, unusual ideas, curiosity, and a variety of experiences. Openness reflects the degree of intellectual curiosity, creativity, and a preference for novelty and a variety a person has. Conscientiousness, tendency to be organized and dependable, show self-discipline, act dutifully, aim for achievement, and prefer planned rather than spontaneous behavior. Extroversion, energetic, surgency, assertiveness, sociability, and the tendency to seek stimulation in the company of others and talkativeness. Agreeableness, tendency to be compassionate and cooperative rather than suspicious and antagonistic toward others. And neuroticism, tendency to be prone to psychological stress, the tendency to experience unpleasant emotions easily, such as anger, anxiety, depression, and vulnerability. So what they did is they took each of these people that took these online surveys and they placed them on the spectrum for each of these five, big five, personality traits. And most people clustered into four groups. The first group would be average, that had high neuroticism, high extroversion, low openness, uh, high agreeableness, and high conscientiousness. The second group is self-centered, which had low neuroticism, but high uh, extroversion, low openness, low agreeability, and low conscientiousness. The third group is role model, with low neuroticism, high extroversion, high openness, high agreeableness, and high conscientiousness. And the last was reserved, which had low neuroticism, a uh, middle amount of extroversion, low openness, high agreeability, and high conscientiousness. And I found it interesting that most people fell within these four definitions. Now, obviously not everyone, right? Hashtag not all. But most people did. In fact, I took a big five personality trait quiz to see where I landed. And I came pretty close to being in one of these categories. Now, the category that I scored highest in was openness. And I thought that was uh, pretty interesting. But... I think anybody that knows me would, would probably agree with that. And looking at the other categories, I would fall into what they would call role model. But I just got to say, these names are terrible, right? I don't consider myself a role model. And I don't think anybody that is a role model would want to be called a role model. That, that's a stupid name. But again, I guess I'd rather be a role model than average, right? Or self-centered. 
Those are all terrible names. The people that did this study, that did this research, they obviously didn't talk to any marketers, right? Because these names stink. They need to come up with a different name for these uh, different personality types. I would suggest maybe using an animal, right? You have a, a rhino personality type or a tiger personality type, something innocuous like that. Someone could say that they were a, a tiger personality type, but they're not going to say that they're self-centered. So for this to really take off, they, they got to rework some of the names. The other criticism about this study is that all the information was from people that take online personality tests. Well, until today, when I, when I took one, I can't remember ever taking an online personality test. So someone like me would not be in their data set. There's probably a certain type of person that takes online personality tests. Uh, no judgment on them, but that's what they're into. They like taking all these tests. And so people that do that would probably be overrepresented in their study. And people that never take online tests are not going to show up in the study at all. So going forward, I'd suggest they, you know, meet with some marketers, come up with some better names. And they'd also have to include some people that don't take online tests. But I thought this was a, a nice introduction to this idea of these four distinct personality types. Tell me, have you taken an online personality quiz? Let me know in the comments. Peace. Help me reach my goal of 1 million su <laughs> of 2,000 subscribers by clicking the like button and subscribing. Thanks.